Hi everyone, welcome back to Study Room. My name is Angel and today we'll be doing chapter number 10th of class 9th that is Kathmandu. So this chapter is written by the author Vikram Seth. So Vikram Seth, C-V-E-F-R-S-L, is an Indian novelist and poet. He has written several novels and poetry books. He has received several awards such as Padma Shri, Sahitya Academy Award, Pravasi Bharatiya Samman and Crossword Book Award. Okay, so now talking about the theme of the story. So the theme of this chapter is based on that author recalls his visit to Kathmandu, which is the capital of Nepal. And he uh, basically puts focus on two temples, that is Pashupatinath Temple and the second is Baudhanath Stupa Temple. Okay. So, this brief extract from Vikram Seth's travelogue, Heaven Lake, is a glimpse of Kathmandu, especially the famous Pashupatinath and Baudhnath Stupa Temple. Hmm? It is an account of his experience while traveling to India via Nepal. Okay. So, I get a cheap room in the center of town and sleep for hours. The next morning, with Mr. Shah's son, and nephew, I visit the two temples in Kathmandu that are most sacred to Hindus and Buddhists. Okay, so the chapter starts with that the author first of all rented a cheap room and at the center of the town and sleep or slept for hours. And then in the next morning with uh, Mr. Shah's son and nephew, nephew is Bhatija or Panja, okay. Then he visited to the two temples in Kathmandu, the most famous temple that is Pashupatina temple and the Bodhanath Stupa temple. Okay. And which are most sacred uh, to Hindus and Buddhists. Now, at Pashupatina, outside which a sign proclaims entrance for the Hindus only, there is atmosphere of febrile confusion Priests, hawkers, devotees, tourists, cows, monkeys, pigeons and dogs roam through the crowd. So here proclaims means make known publicly. And febrile confusion means complete chaos. Okay, so here here the author is saying that at Pashupati Nath temple, outside which it is written and I mean they are pro uh, proclaiming it or making it publicly official that the entrance is only for Hindus. Okay, so there is atmosphere of complete uh, confusion or complete chaos. But why priests, hawkers, devotees, tourists, cows, monkeys, pigeons, dogs, etc., etc., roam through the ground? Okay, so uh, we get an idea number one that Pashupati Nath's temple is first of all for only Hindus only, and second, uh, there is uh, complete chaos or febrile confusion outside the Pashupati Nath's temple. Okay, so we offered a few flowers. There are so many worshippers that some people try to get the priest's attention are elbowed aside by others pushing their way to the front. So here the, they offered the flowers and then there were so many worshippers and they all were trying to get priest's attention and just for that they were started elbowing each other. Elbowing means like pushing uh, each other with their uh, elbows. Okay, so just, so just so that they can get to the front. Now, a princess of Nepali's royal house appears. Everyone bows and makes a way. By the main gate, a party of saffron-clad westerners struggle for permission to enter. The policeman is not convinced that they are the Hindus. Only Hindus are allowed to enter the temple. Okay, so then what happened? A princess of Nepali's royal house appears and then because the princess arrived, so everyone made a way for her so that she can pass easily. Hmm. So by the main gate, a party of saffron clad westerners, okay, uh, saffron clad westerners are foreigners who are dressed up as sadhus. Okay, foreigners who are Oh, sorry, dress up as 
sadhus sadhus means priests okay so uh, with that the policeman is not convinced that they were hindus okay so why was uh, the policeman checking because we just read before that uh, outside the pashupati uh, nath temple it is clearly mentioned that only hindus are allowed in the temple okay so that's why the policeman was not convinced that the foreigner was hindu now a fight breaks out between two monkeys one chases the other who jumps onto a shivling, uh, shivling and runs screaming around the temples and down to the river the holy bagmati that flows below so a fight breaks out between two monkeys and they were chasing each other and one of them jumps onto a shivling okay so what is shivling you might have also heard about it that is an idol which is worshiped and is represented as a uh, a form of lord shiva hmm okay this is shivling hmm okay so one of the monkey jumps onto the shivling and then runs screaming around the temples down to the river okay so which river was it bagmati river it was bag mati river hmm okay moving on a corpse is being cremated on its banks washer women are at their work and children bathe from a balcony of basket of flowers and leaves all the offerings now wilted is dropped into the river a small sign half protrudes from the stone platform on the river bank when it emerges fully the goddess inside will escape and the evil period of kaliyug will end on earth so a corpse means a dead body half protrudes means spread oaks or protrudes means to come out and wilted means dry and withered and shrine means a place a uh, worship so here the author is trying to make us imagine all the scenario that is happening uh, so you can start with a corpse that is a dead body is being cremated on its bank bank of the river and the washer women are washing their clothes children are bathing and from a balcony uh, old flowers with her dry flowers and leaves uh, all these kind of offerings are you know dropped into the river and then it is also said that a small shrine half protrudes from the stone platform on the river bank so uh, there is a small shrine small shrine is a place to worship kind of a small temple at the you know bank of the river like very closely very uh, which is very close to the river okay so it comes out from the stone platform on the river bank and when it emerges fully the goddess inside will escape and the evil period of the kaliyug will end on earth so it's a saying that when the uh, shrine or shrine will emerge completely then the goddess will come out of it and will end all the evilness on this earth okay evil period of kaliyug kaliyug is the kind of the yug the era that we are in that is called as kaliyug which is filled with uh, evilness okay that's what we say kaliyug at bodnath stupa the buddhist shrine of kathmandu there is in contrast a sense of stillness its immense white dome is ringed by a road okay so uh, here we can uh, can you get the difference that at the pashupati nath temple there was chaos and all this noise and confusion outside the temple but whereas in the bodnath stupa or outside bodnath stupa there is a sense of stillness okay and its immense white dome this is white dome is ring by the road hmm. small shops stand on its outer edge many of these are owned by tibetan immigrants felt bags 
Tibetan prints and silver jewelry can be bought here. There are no crowds. This is a haven of quietness in the busy streets around. So here, immigrants mean a person who comes to live permanently in another country. Okay, that is called as immigrant. Okay, and here haven means a safe place. Okay, so here. Outside the Bodhna Stupa temple, small shops were located there and which was owned by Tibetan immigrants because most of the immigrants were Tibetan. Okay. And uh, there were shops were full with uh, felt packs, Tibetan prints and silver jewelry that can be bought there. So there were no crowds. So it was kind of a, a safe, pa uh, safe place full of uh, quietness and stillness in the busy streets around. Okay. Now, Kathmandu is vivid, mercenary, religious with small shrines to flower adorned deities along the narrowest and busiest streets with fruit sellers, flute sellers, hawkers of postcards, shop selling, western cosmetics, film rolls and chocolate or copper utensils and Nepalis antiques. So Kathmandu is vivid, full of, full of diversity. Mercenary means businesses, religious uh, also uh, of particular religion and with small shrines. Small shrines is, means a place you can worship to wear. So here it, uh, you can see the diversity. Also is trying to tell us that there is so much diversity. Like how one place is uh, kind of very quiet and still and whereas the other is the busiest streets full of you know chaos and noise etc etc and the busiest streets are full filled with the filled with the fruit sellers loot sellers hawkers of postcards shop selling western cosmetics film rolls and chocolates copper tinsel in the palace antiques etc etc and also the Kathmandu is also filled with the flower on deities okay so deities here means gods and goddesses so here the gods and goddesses are worshipped with flowers hmm. film songs played out from the radios car horn sound bicycle bells, ri bells ring stray cows low questioning at the motorcycles vendors shout out their wares okay so this kind of the stanza is particularly giving us the you know message that it was a very crowded and a noisy scenario so there are a lot of noise and crowd there hmm. how uh, because film songs are played out from the radios okay and then car horns noise bicycles bells rings stray cows low questioning low means the sound of moo that they produce and questioning at the motorcycles when cars, uh, sorry, cows move uh, questioning at the motorcycles. Vendors shout out their wares. Wares means sending their products, okay, which they can sell. Now, I indulge myself mindlessly. Buy a bar of marzipan, a corn on the cob roasted in charcoal brazier on the pavement, uh, rubbed with salt, chili powder and lemon. A couple of love story comics and even a reader's digest. So here marzipan means a sweet made from grated almonds. Oops. Grated almonds. Hmm. And brazier means open store. Okay. So the author is saying that he indulged himself mindlessly. He bought a bar of marzipan, that is sweet, and a corn on the cob. This is a corn on the cob, which is roasted in a charcoal uh, open store on the pavement, which is and then rubbed with salt, chili powder, and lemon. Hmm. So he also bought a couple of love story comics and even a reader's digest. So here the reader's digest is a name of the magazine. Okay, 
now. All this I was done with Coca Cola and a nauseating orange drink and feel much the better for it. Wash down means to drink something after a meal. Just to digest it. Okay. And nauseating means here sickening. Okay. So after all that, uh, the author uh, drank Coca-Cola and the nauseating sickening, which means sickening orange drink, just to digest the meal. And then he felt much better for it. Okay. Now. I consider what route I should take back home. If I were propelled by enthusiasm for travel per se, I would go by bus and train to Patna, then sail up the Ganges past Banaras to Allahabad, then up the Yamuna past Agra to Delhi. Here, propelled means drive or put something forward. And travel per se means, per se means usually by itself. Okay, so here author is saying that he was wondering that uh, how, by which way he should go back home. Okay, so if he was very enthusiastic or, you know, felt like, okay, he should do something very enthusiastic and adventurous, then uh, to travel back to his home, that is in Delhi. So, which route and what kind of way would he travel or take? Okay. So, number one, what, uh, what he did that, first of all, he would go by a bus and a train to Patna. Okay. And then he would sail up the Ganges past Benares to Allahabad and then to Yamuna and then Agra and then finally he will reach Delhi. So, that would be a very long route. Okay. Now. But I am too exhausted and homesick. Today is the last day of August. So uh, go home, I tell myself. Move directly towards home. I enter a Nepal Airlines office and buy a ticket for tomorrow's flight. So here the author is saying that he was too exhausted. Too exhausted means too tired and homesick. Homesick is me, uh, means that the feeling of missing home. Hmm, okay. That is the feeling of that. Uh, it's called as homesickness. So he was missing home and was tired. So what he did and also it was the last day of August. So he told himself that just move directly towards home. And he booked a flight at Nepal Airlines. Uh, and it was a tomorrow's flight. Okay. Now I look at the flute seller standing in a corner of the square near the hotel. In his hand is a pole with an attachment at the top from which 50 to 60 basuris protrude in all directions like the quills of porcupine. They are of, they are of bamboo, they are the cross flutes and recorders. So uh, the author observed a flute seller who was standing in the corner of the square near the hotel. Hmm. In his hand there was a pole with an attachment at top of 50 to 60 Pansuris. Pansuris means flute as you can see in the picture. Okay. These are pansuris or flute. So it was protruding in all direction as you can see it's like this in the picture also which reminded the author of the quills of porcupine. So porcupine is an animal which has quills like you might have seen him. <laughs> I don't know how to draw him but it's just like this. <laughs> there are so many uh, quills okay. So that's how porcupine is. So you might know what it is but still I just try my best to explain it. Okay so next. And also yeah he had variety of flutes, cross flutes and recorders. From time to time, he stands the pole on the ground, selects the flute and plays for a few minutes. The sound rises clearly above the noise of the traffic and the hawker's cries. He plays slowly, meditatively, without excessive display. Okay, so here, uh, what he did that, he put the pole on the ground and then selects a flute and then starts playing it for a few minutes. And then uh, 
the sound was so clear that it rose above all the noises that was cre uh, creating in the background that was of traffic the hawkers etc etc so he was playing the flute very slowly meditatively without any excessive display meditatively means thoughtfully hmm okay moving on he does not shout out his fears occasionally he makes a say but in a curiously off-handed way as if this were incidental to his enterprise sometimes he breaks off playing to talk to the fruit seller i imagine that this has been the pattern for his life for years so what uh, he did not shout out his wares or uh, wares again is uh, items that are you know put for sale okay so he did not sell like other vendors who just shout out like you know when you they, you, you you also might have heard like when the vegetable seller uh, comes by and he says shout like das ke do something something etc etc so uh, he did not shout like that occasionally he makes a sale but most of the times he just ca he is curiously off handed way as if this were incidental to his enterprise off handed means casual about it so he was very casually uh, playing plays the flute and didn't bother much if it was you know he if he was getting a sale or not so it was like it's just he's just doing it very casually so sometimes he breaks up the plane to talk to the fruit seller so he takes a break sometimes and talk to the fruit seller and then the author says that he uh, he imagines that this might have been the pattern for his life for years for fru or the flute seller's life for years okay i find it difficult to tear myself away from the square flute music always does this to me it it is at once the most universal and most particular of sound so here the author is saying that it is very difficult for himself to go away from that square because the flute music was draw, uh, drawing himself there and making him stay there because it was very melodious and uh, sound very uh, good to him so flute music always does this to him and uh, it is at uh, it is at once that most the most universal and most particular of sounds so according to the author flute music is uh, the most universal and most particular uh, of sound now there is no culture that does not have its flute okay the reed ne the recorder the tapanish shakuhachi the deep basri of hindustani classical music the clear of uh, breathy flutes of south america the high pitched chinese flutes okay so here the author is saying that every culture has its flutes flute okay for example the reed ne the recorder japanese have shakuhachi uh, indians have the uh, deep basuri the hindustani classical music have deep basuri and in south america there is breathy flutes and uh, in china they also have high pitched flutes hmm. each has a specific fingering and compass it weaves its own associations yet to hear any flute is it seems to me to be drawn into the commonality of all mankind to be moved by music closest in the phrases and sentences to the human voice so fingering means a a way of placing fingers sorry placing fingers to play the notes okay and compass here means range so uh, the uh, his the author is telling that each flute has a specific way or you know that it has to be played and a compass a range Uh, so it weaves its own associations yet to hear any flute is it seems to me to be drawn into a commonality of all mankind so to be moved by the music closest in its phrases and sentences to the human voice so in this paragraph the author is telling that all, all this uh, the music made by flute is a commonality of mankind that everyone is drawn to such kind of music so that is common okay and 
uh, uh, the thing that to be moved by the music is closest in its phrases and sentences to human voice. Okay. Now, its motive force is living breath. It too needs to pause and breathe before it can go on. So, he's telling that when you play flute, of course, you have to blow air. So, that is a living breath. And when you are blowing the air, the, there is sound produced, right? Sound is getting produced when you blow the air. But when you stop it, when you pause, okay, and you don't blow the air, the sound is not produced. So, that's what author is saying that its motive force is to is living breath. It too needs to, uh, needs to pause and breathe before it can go on. Now, that I can be so affected by a few familiar phrases on the Bansuri surprises me at first. For on the previous occasions that I have returned home after a long absence abroad, I have hardly noticed such details and certainly have not invested them with the significance I now do. Okay, so author is saying that he didn't, uh, he never thought that he would be so affected by so familiar phrases on on Basuri. It's very common. Okay, and it surprises him first. But for on previous occasions that he have returned home for a long, uh, you know, time after a long time because he wasn't abroad before. So he said that he just hardly noticed such things and certainly did not have invested them the significance which he now does. Okay. So now let's have a look on the key terms. First is proclaim. It means that make known publicly or officially. Hmm? Surprise confusion means hurried activity or complete chaos. Shine is a place of worship. Haven means a safe place. Marzipan is a sweet made with grated almond, as you can see in this picture. Brazier is an open stove, butty, which is say in the. Okay. Nauseating means sickening. Same expression that you get from this picture. Or oh, GIF actually. And per se means by itself. Meditatively means thoughtfully. Off-handed means casual, not showing much interest in something. Fingering means the way of placing the fingers to play different notes. Uh, though, as you can see in this GIF, how the, he's playing the uh, notes on the flute. And compass means range. So now it's time to do the questions. Okay, so name the two temples the author visited in Kathmandu. So number one was... Pashupatina temple and number two was Bodhnath Stupa temple. Easy peasy, right? Now, the writer says, All this I wish down with Coca Cola. Wash down with Coca Cola. What does all this refer to? Okay, so uh, here the, in the question, uh, first of all, it is asking you what are the items that was eaten by the author. So, we have read the chapter, right? And we know there are certain things that we specifically put attention to. So, you guys have to find out that what was those things and write down and answer it, okay? <laughs> now, what does Vikram say compared to the quills of the porcupine? Mm -hmm. What was it? Remember, remember, I also made a diagram like this and also the diagram of the animal which was very lame but still I tried. So, what was it? Mm -hmm -hmm. Remember that and try to answer that as well. Now, name five kind of flutes. You guys can do that also. It's quite easy question. Now, what difference does the author note between the flute seller and the other hawkers? Okay, so it is very important question because there was too much em emphasis on the flute seller. As you can see how... He played the music and uh, what was his purpose or was he very, you know, uh, motivated towards selling the flute or, you know, everything. So, combined answer is, you know, made and try to do this by yourself as well. Hmm? Now, what is the belief at Pashupati Nath about the end of Kalyug? So, Kalyug was the era of the evil that was that is said and... It is also said that the era which we live in right now is Kalyuk. Okay. So, 
uh, I'll give you a hint about this that it was about the shrine and also what happened when uh, uh, the goddess will be released come out of the shrine and what will be uh, what she will do etc etc okay if you have listened to the chapter very carefully so you will be very easily answering all these type of questions right now compare and contrast the atmosphere in and around the Pajnath shrine and with the Pashupatinath temple hmm? that's also a very easy question now how does the author describe Kathmandu's busiest streets? Hmm. So about this also there is a lot of you know uh, details given in the chapter itself. So that will be also very very easy. Now, to hear any flute is to be drawn into the commonality of all mankind. Why does the author say this? Okay, so this is the last question and the most important question. So this is your main homework basically that you guys have to answer this question okay now let's have a quick revision okay so in this chapter the author recalls his visit to Kathmandu the capital of Nepal he describes two famous temples of the city the Pashupatina temple and the Bodhnath Stupa temple at the Pashupatina temple there is an atmosphere of confusion and it is believed that when the whole of the shrine comes out of the river Bhagwati, the goddess inside will come out, then the evil period of the Kaliyuga will end on earth. Hmm. There is a sense of stillness at the Bhajanath Stupa of the Buddhists. It has a big white dome. The shrine is surrounded by a road. Hmm. The author decides to go back home and to take a flight rather than taking a long route home. In a corner of the square near his hotel, he finds a man selling flutes made up of bamboo. From time to time, the flute seller plays on flute. The flute is a common musical organ in almost every culture and reminds the author of the commonality of all mankind. So with this, our chapter has ended. So I hope you all enjoyed it and learned something new. So with this, we'll meet in our next video. Till then, keep studying, keep learning. Bye.